Hey guys, this is Jake Heaps here in the 710 Studios. Excited to talk with you guys about the emergence of Ed Dixon. Great to have him back into the lineup and see the immediate impact that he can have. You saw, obviously, with Will Disley, the, the matchup problem that he presented. He was a great run blocker, but was able to make plays in the passing game. And to be able to get a guy like Ed Dixon back in the lineup with Will Disley being out with injury is huge, and I'm going to show you exactly why. So first play that we're going to go into, it's 14-7 it's, uh, Seahawks. Uh, three minutes left to go in the second quarter. It's third and four. Okay, so critical situation here. Need to convert, need to move the chains, and also let's get in the red zone and score. The Seahawks are number one in red zone scoring, which is awesome. So this is how they did it. So right here you see we've got a bunch formation to the right. We've got Ed Dixon lined up in a tight split uh, off to the left. And what's happening here is they are going to use, again, I've talked about this before, they're going to use motion to Tyler Lockett to determine whether it's man or zone. Give Russell Wilson some more indicators. Help him solve the puzzle that the defense is trying to present. So they move Tyler Lockett in motion. So now what you've gotten is you now, this corner started over here and he, motion, he went over with Tyler Lockett. So what does that give us an indicator of? Uh, in, it, it's man gives us the man indicator. So now what we have is we've got Doug Baldwin who's going to run a dig route right here. David Moore is going to run basically a spot return route. And then uh, we're going to have we're going to have Mike Davis here in scat protection and he's going to go out in a swing. Now what you're going to have on this side with Ed Dixon and Tyler Lockett is you're going to have Ed Dixon run a corner route and you're going to have Tyler Lockett run an option route, meaning that he could go either way to this side based off how the defender's playing him. So with all that being said, we're now going to look at this going, all right, do I have zone, do I have man? We know that we have man, so this side over here is our zone side, our zone beater side. This side over here is our man beater side. So Russell's going to look to his left. Now, once the ball is snapped, something happens. So the defensive end that was lined up here now drops back in coverage. So what Russell was looking at initially was hoping to get this nice one-on-one -on -one matchup with Tyler Lockett and have him win on a choice route. But because this defensive end dropped back, well now what you have here is you've got, uh, it gets Russ's eyes to go to Ed Dixon. Ed Dixon does a nice job winning off the line of scrimmage, and as you can see here, there's nice separation here between him and the DB, and which allows him to put the DB on his back, and Russell throws the ball and, and, and gives Ed Dixon a chance, and man, does he make a fantastic play over the defensive back for a touchdown. Now, we go to the next play. Next situation, it's 21-7, 11-33, left to go in the third quarter, it's third and one. Now, this is a really cool deal here. We've talked about once you get into these short yarded situations, you have to run the football. This is the identity that you have. You've been mauling people all game long, all, the past five games. And so now in, in this situation, you would expect them to run the ball. And that's, that's, what, they're, that's what Brian Schottenheimer, Russell Wilson, uh, this offense was hoping for. So now that you can present this, now they go, the Lions know this and they know that they have to be able to stop the run in this situation. So what we have here is we've got a two-by-two two formation here. Um, we've got Ed Dixon lined up as the tight end right here. We've got Jaron Brown on the outside as the Z receiver and then we've got uh, Doug in the slot and David Moore on the outside. What they do here is they motion Jaron Brown here just inside of Ed Dixon. And if you look at the defense here, you notice you've got man-to-man, -man, and this is, a, this is actually a safety that's lined up on Ed Dixon here. So you've got, as you go to, into this and you go back to the motion, Jaron Brown motions down, the corner motions into this spot. So let's go to the next picture. All right, so now we've got Jaron Brown. He's at his final motion landing point. And now what you're going to see here by the Seahawks, and specifically Jaron Brown and Ed Dixon, so what you're going to see here is you're going to see as soon as the ball is snapped that Ed Dixon is going to fire off the ball at the outside linebacker at 42, and you're going to see Jaron Brown very aggressive and act like he's in run blocking with that safety that's lined up man-to-man -man over him. What this does is it makes this corner here react to those blocks. 
And what he does is he now fires to the line of scrimmage. And so what this is, is this is simply a nice tight end delay um, off of play action. So now as we go to the next picture, we are now in the play action motion. You can see the corner's demeanor. He's rushing to the line of scrimmage. He's attacking the line of scrimmage, trying to make a play, trying to stop Chris Carson on third and one. Now, as you look at this, Jaron Brown locked up with the locked up with the safety. Ed Dixon locked up with the outside linebacker. And now Ed Dixon is now trying to simply get his hand, get the linebacker's hands off of him, and now sneak down the sideline. And as you can see in this final picture, boy. This is, about as bi this is about as open as it's ever going to get in the NFL. This was a great sequence setting up this situation. They knew coming into this game that film studies showed that this was going to be a good opportunity for them to attack this particular situation, this coverage, and they were able to do that because the run game is so effective and because you have a tight end in Ed Dixon who is known primarily as a run blocker. However, he has the ability to be effective in the passing game. This allows the Seahawks offense to be more dynamic, and I'm excited to see this uh, continue to develop going into next week.